تحفظوا قطع الحفظ عشان تاخدوا جوائز بكره الكل يمضي ويزول ترتيلة الكل يمضي
تدينه هل كلامنا عن المثلية يبقى يدانا في فرق نقول اكز مرة اكز مرة أشارك معاكم ولو لمدة بسيطة وأم سوري على اللخبطة اللي حصلت الصبح بالنسبة للقداس يعني هو أنا كنت كل سنة بهتم قوي إن أحضر القداس في المؤتمر على الأقل يعني عشان يبقى فرصة كويسة أصلي معاكم ومع أبونا داود ومع الإخوة بس وكنت عامل ترتيباتي على فكرة على كده برضو بس جا رحلة من كندا أخويا بش أبونا بشوي تعرفوا أبونا بشوي اللي هو أخويا من كندا جاب رحلة خمسة وخمسين واحد فكان في حاجة من اتنين لإما أجيبهم يصلوا معانا هنا <تصفيق> لإما بقى كنا نصلي اضطريت طبعا إن أنا أغير الجدول وأصلي معاهم لأن هيبقى كان برضو عدد مش قليل و بس الحقيقة 
ما خدتش بالي كان عشان هم هنا عاملين حسابهم ان انا العاده ان انا بصلي يوم الاحد فسمعت ان ابونا كان قال امبارح ان انا هاجي اصلي القداس يعني فاي ام سوري ماي فولت كان المفروض ان انا اخد بالي لكن نشكر ربنا كل شيء كويس اهم حاجه ان احنا موجودين مع بعض مع انا ابونا داوود و جيت لكم برضه مران اثا عنوان حلو جميل وعلى فكره اتمنى ويمكن ابونا يكون قالها لكم اتمنى نرجع للايام الاولى في المسيحيه ان ده الاوفيشال جريتنج يعني لما واحد يقابل واحد كان ما يقولوش هاي هاو ار يو الكلام دوت بتاع العالم كان الاوفيشال جريتنج للمسيحيين هو مران اثا يعني اكبر تعازيه للمسيحي آه ان الرب اتي يعني ربنا جاي وكان عندهم العقيده في البدايه ان المسيح جاي بسرعه لدرجه لما بطرس الرسول كتب رسالته يعني قال لهم ما تقلقوش انتوا كنتوا فاكرين المسيح جاي ده ده ربنا بيطول المده شويه لعل تكون في فرصه للناس انها تتوب ودينا بقى لنا 2000 سنه ولسه مستنيين بس في الاول كان عندهم احساس شديد جدا ان المسيح جاي على طول يعني مش هيقعدوا المده دي كلها لكن ليس لنا ان نعرف الازمنه والاوقات فلازم كل انسان يبقى على طول مستعد لكن مران اثا توبك جميله جدا واحنا على فكره القناه اسف الجريده انتوا شفتوا الجريده اللي بنصدرها بتتوزع في الكنايس كلها اسمها مران اثا يعني صدقوني لو كنت اخدت بالي من عنوان المؤتمر كنت جبت لكم الجريده هبعت هبعتها لكم كم نسخه ونيد بتتوزع في نيوجيرسي وفي نيويورك وفي نيو انجلاند كل الولايات بتاعتنا يعني م? لا بنسلفانيا دي بقى تبع الامبكراس بس اف هي ويل ريكوست نبعت له فور فري يعني فانت قولي له عايزين مران اس بالنسبة للإخوة في نيوجيرسي مبروك نيافة الأنبا جبريل نيافة الأنبا جبريل من أولاد نيويورك ما اتولدش في نيويورك لكن اتربى آسف من أولاد نيوجيرسي نيويورك من أولاد نيوجيرسي ما اتولدش في نيوجيرسي بس اتربى في نيوجيرسي من شباب نيوجيرسي نشأ وكبر وتخرج من كلية الطب هو طبيب في الاصل يعني واشتغل طبعا وبعدين فضل حياه الرهبنه وهو انسان رهباني جدا كان بيحب الدير ورافض خالص فكره الخروج من الدير لدرجه لما حبينا ننشئ الدير بتاع العذراء والبابا كيرلوس هنا عندنا في نيويورك كان من اول واحد نطلبه هو الانبا كان اسمه ابونا جبريل برضه والانبا بولا من دير الانبا بولا ورفض تماما الخروج من الدير لانه بيحب الدير وبيحب الرهبنه وبعد كده قرست البابا تودرس يبدو اقنعه ان هو يعني يجي امريكا في احتياج طبعا لنيوجيرسي ان يكون فيها اسقف ويرعى كنايس نيوجيرسي لكن هو انسان مبروك جدا متواضع جدا وهادي جدا وان شاء الله يكون بركه في وسط الكنايس كلها والاباء والشعب في في نيوجيرسي انا بس بهنيكم هو ان شاء الله هيوصل يوم 14 في استقبال يوم 15 وفي برضه استقبال في ايست برونزويك يوم السبت يعني 15 ده الجمعه هيبقى في منط... في الكنايس الشمال وبعدين الجمعة السبت في كنايس الجنوب عشان ما يحصلش زحام شديد في يوم واحد فعلى يومين وان شاء الله تتعرفوا عليه وتاخدوا بركته انسان وديع ومتواضع وزي ما بقول رهباني يعني فيري فيري ستريكت رهبانيا ودي حاجة جميلة للأب الأسقف ساعدوه ساعدوه ان هو يحتفظ بالحاجات دي لان طبعا الخدمه وال... بتاخد الانسان من ال... 
تفتكروا قصة البابا شنودة لما بيقول لما البابا كرولوس رسمه بيقول لما أبكي في حياتي مثلما بكيت في تلك الليلة وقال لما بقيت بطرك حياتي ما اتغيرتش كتير لأني أوريدي كنت وسط الناس بس يمكن المسؤولية زادت ف بيتاخد من الدير ده ويتحط في وسط العالم بعد ما يكون خلاص رتب حياته على ستايل معين تبقى يعني مش سهل فربنا يديله نعمة وبركة cried for his life when he was taken from the monastic life. So you can imagine the type of life Bishop Gabriel is going through when he was pulled from his monastic life currently. So we ask you to pray for him because this is the monastic life that Bishop Gabriel had paid for and now he has been taken out of it. We thank Bishop David for his motivation for my weakness and he always motivates us for his service and for the motivation of Mbabram's service and you know his grace always motivates him. Beloved, we ask that Question if there is a relationship between condemnation and judging when we make an opinion about homosexuality. Judgment is a sin when it does not have love. But if you are making an opinion and you know that you are a sinner and the other person is a sinner too, you can speak of them in love, but the sin is a sin. And maybe he will repent and he will be even before you go to heaven. So please remember you always think of them and pray and repent and ask and pray for them that they may go to become better. The world may convince them that this is a normal type, but we are not of the world. God said, you are not of the world as I am not of the world. So we cannot just follow the world. Another question, everyone who asks you of something, give it to him. It will offend you only if you give him what he asks of you. The, the verse does not mean that you must give him the same thing he asks of you. Maybe somebody is asking you to share with him in a sin. Would you share with him in a sin? Of course not. If someone asks you to have a false witness, would you do a false witness? If somebody is asking you for money to pay drug, to bring drugs, you cannot just open it for everything, but rather be ready to give. But what you give, Give him the thing that benefits him, not the thing that he is asking of. The poor people in Egypt, we love them and they are really honored. But they ask you for a thousand pounds. They take it and they spend it and they still live poor. Would you still give him money? No, he will not work. But rather, maybe he will use the money wrongfully. So then the money will hurt him. Then I'm not giving him money, even if he asks for it. But I will teach him a job. I will teach him how to be a spiritual person, how to be a better father, how I will listen to him, I will be kind on him. Because what he is asking of is not good for him. When you're 
little son was asking for things when he was a little boy. Were you giving him every single thing? Of course you are saying no for many things. So this verse will offend you only if you think that you have to give him what he asked for. Even God himself, when who said, ask and you will be given, he still does not give us except what is benefiting us. So Christ himself, when he applied the verse, he did not give us uh, haphazardly. He wisely gave us what we need, not what we ask. Another question. 80% of the people are poor. How can God is loving? The poverty in the world is made by men, not by God. The resources of the world could have covered the people more than once. If you know how many billions and resources and richness it could have covered and made no one be poor. And the seven billion, billion people in the world would have been happily living. But what's making poverty is the greed, because some people are living in very high level and they want to feel better and they can sometimes even burn some food in order for the level of the market to be still high. Although these types of resources could have covered the needs of so many millions of people, but rather than to feed people, they would keep the people poor in order for their pockets to be filled. The idea of the Lazarus and the rich man. If the rich man would have given 25% of his food to him, both of them would have gone to heaven. So God is not the reason of poverty. In Africa, they have so much corruption in Africa. Although they have so much resources and richness, but they are dying of poverty because there is a small number of people who are in charge and it's very difficult to to do a charitable work in Africa because the people want a lot of uh, money for you to work or to serve. If everyone does part to give, that will be enough. Another question. Some people are putting prophecies in the social media and predictions, and predictions regarding, regarding countries. I personally, I don't prescribe to these ideas and I don't believe in them. I don't like to connect what happens in Ukraine or COVID with the book of Revelation is very dangerous and very unique, is very bad, is very wrong. Our fathers told us that earthquakes and diseases will happen as the beginning of the end, but you cannot have a unique exact number of times or years that will happen after. Our Lord Jesus Christ have shown us so many signs, but at the end he said, look at yourselves rather than look at the politics and look at what happens in the world. The idea is to repent before the end of the world rather than to keep looking at what happens here and there. So please do not rationalize what happens there and try to connect it to the verses of the Revelation book and at the end you get astray. None of the saints and the fathers have agreed on this and these are only predictions of people. Another question regarding the respect between the man and the woman. 
as we read in the Bible, the woman respects and honor and revere her husband. And Saint Peter wrote that he gives dignity to his wife as they were inheritant of the kingdom of God, as heirs of the kingdom of God. So the man should really revere and honor his wife and this is a biblical understanding and this is a sign of love love has to be shown through respect respect to the weakness respect to the family of each one respect to their needs another question okay. should we pray the igbeya that we pray them on the same times of where the Igbe is needed. The fathers recommend that it should be close to the time, but it doesn't have to be literal. Some servants know that they are at work, so sometimes they pray many hours before they go to work because they know they may not be able to pray the whole system, the whole program. And some others will come at the end. Sometimes we pray um, the Vespers and the Compline. So the literality of literality of praying the same hour is not important, but praying all the time is very important. Also, you may like a psalm and you keep repeating the psalm all the time. And that's why a psalm like, like uh, My Lord, I rise very early to you is present in the first hour and the sixth hour as well. So the fathers apparently who put these uh, prayers had clear attachment to some of these psalms. Another question was regarding the light of orphans. Outside light for orphans, if you want to do a monthly payment, you can do that through a card that you can leave your information and it will be automatically withdrawn from your account. And that's of course is very important because it helps all the projects can continue. For example, the dialysis center needs monthly 100,000 uh, pounds. That's in addition to the millions of pounds to do a dialysis center. The same for the incubators. It needs about 300,000 pounds per month because a poor man cannot pay all this money for the doctors, for the nurses, and for the uh, machines and devices. And of course, the insurance does not cover these things. So, when we start the program, we need a plan to know that there is a maintenance for these projects. The living in emigration land gives us the hardness of heart. I do not agree. As we read in the psalm, everywhere, every place has a place for heart. There are so many people are living for heaven and there are people living in Egypt are hard-hearted. Of course, the mother church in Egypt has the monasteries had its own flavor, but at the end God does not leave himself without witness. Even when Daniel was exiled in Babylon, he was living in honesty and he was seeing Archangel Michael and he was far from far from his country and living in a very corrupt country at that time which is Babylon. I have a question. My son wants to date a girl older than me. Him. You know that the church does not recommend this, but this is not the only factor in dating. If she is a very good girl and she's a spiritual and religious and they are matching and everything else, 
the church just uh, recommends and tell them that occasionally they may get to struggle at one time and she may feel that she will get older than him but at the end the church blesses that wedding the problem is not in that age difference but because of the experience when the girl is a lot older sometimes she may grow a lot older and that may cause some warfare against the purity of their marriage in the Egyptian culture this is very important in the American culture that's not important I am upset from myself because sometimes I am happy when I hear problems happening to other people who I don't like. This is not good. This is a bad sin. Please pray that God may have mercy on you because this type of sin needs to be resisted. It's not good to um, rejoice in the sadness of others. This is lack of purity of heart and um, poor level of love. Please watch your heart. New question. How do you teach about God the Father? The Church teaches that the Father has, was not seen by anyone and no one has seen God the Father. The Father is seen through the Son. Whoever has seen me have seen the Father. And that's why in the Coptic Orthodox concept, the main icon is the Pantocrator that we see Jesus Christ on the throne. We will not see and will not ask for the Father because we have seen the Father through the Son and the Holy Spirit lives in us. So we see the, our Lord and His glory. In the book of Revelation, we see the Son in, on the throne. We don't see the Father on the throne, neither in the Revelation or in Isaiah or Ezekiel. But we see the glory of Jesus Christ in heavens. And we see the four non corporeal creatures but he is glory his glory is in the glory of his own son question the the groom is very angry and he gets angry the answer is, anger does not get better with marriage. It actually gets worse. So if they are not yet married, then be careful. The defects are usually get worse. The defects sometimes get worse later on. Unless there is a real repentance, the defect can grow. Because during engagement he is trying to show himself in a better way. But without looking good before marriage, so that's even more difficult later on. This overreaction and uh, impatience can be a big problem later on. Watch out and go to your father of confession. Anger can have so many ways. How do you express your anger? What's your face showing? What's your tongue is speaking? What are your decisions? If you are upset at something, that's okay. That's completely normal. Even Christ was upset. But the, but the wrong temperament, that's the bad thing.
we are going to watch a video regarding the children in the Khatadba. This is this place is in the village and con surrounded by five to s or six monasteries. We we receive a lot of your children and a lot of your servants, and we receive several thousands of children per season. They take a uniform, a backpack, and several gifts with them. They spend very good time. They learn uh, spiritual things and hymns and they also uh, swim and uh, play and they, they live in a very decent way. And this is the beginning of their change later on. We have been doing this for eight years. We, have, we stopped for two years and because it's becoming, it's getting to be an important development, we did eight other lands the same way. We started another land in Kenya. Their, their smile is beautiful. They feel that they are respected. They feel they are loved. They feel like uh, they had a great time and they are being called and respected and have great time. And and your children when they come even from the age of 13 they come they come and they are considered as servants and some of your kids are spending over a month with us and when they return back they are far better in their attitude and they are more responsible in their lives so they get to almost be programmed So they return back, becoming much better and in a good way. If, if you guys would like to come as a family or as individuals, please speak to Mr. Nabil or Nancy Ashamala or Regina. Both uh, the three of them can help in coordinating who will go. We have a little zoo there. The Pope uh, Tawadros came and attended and he liked it a lot. And the monasteries around us uh, come and the monks come to uh, uh, pray with the children. We're going to watch another video. the village of the Bustan. Um, the Bustan is a place in Kenya, uh, about an hour from Luxor airport. So those who are coming to have time off in Luxor, they are going to come and serve in Bustan. It's about uh, being serving on 80 acres and there is a lot of many villages. And because we feel there are so many people are coming from so many um, far away to come all the way to Khatadba, so now Kenna is far better and closer. So they will get uh, the same service, but at least it's closer to the southern part of Egypt. The, there was a retreat for the wives of the priests. This week is the first week for the children of the southern of Egypt. Those who come to Cairo can go to Khatadba and those who go to Upper Egypt uh, can go to uh, Qina. Light for Orphans is covering all the expenses and we thank you for all the donations you sent because there is plenty of workers that they work in these things and um, 
because because we basically have self-sufficiency that we eat and uh, bring everything from within the village eggs uh, uh, vegetables uh, fruits uh, chicken and so on and this is a common phenomenon that there is a self-sufficiency in in the place we are building so at least uh, it's very healthy and in the same time uh, helps uh, to employ so many people um, and also of course is much cheaper I hope you can come and serve with us and they will love having you as well and it will change your lives as well we'll say a song Yeah. 
This lecture will be will be about all the kingdoms of the world beca became belonging to the Lord. We say Maran Atha, which means God came and is coming. As we have heard from His grace, this is the greeting that we heard it. We have something that others do not have. Our Lord came and is coming. He comes again and takes us with Him, and we belong to Him. We are always living in a joyful state. He comes as a groom to take His bride. The book of Revelation summarizes this at the end of the book. I was disappointed with so many battles lately I have heard in so many countries about sexual perversions and the devil is really roaming the world and things are getting worse and I heard a lot of youth trying to be enduring and there is clear tr understanding against the biblical truth of course we have to endure and respect but the sin is sin we cannot legalize the sin and accept it as truth so I told myself at the end of the day the kingdom of the worlds have come to our Lord. Even if we are getting close to the final tribulation and even if the people will be persecuted, all those who want to live in righteousness will be persecuted regardless of the location. Until when, O oh Lord, do you allow all of these persecutions? So in the book of Revelation, we will hear that the, all the kingdoms of the world will belong to him. From Revelation 11, then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord our Lord, and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshipped God. We give thanks, O Lord Almighty, the one who is, and who was, and who is to come. So return back to the idea of Maran Atha. Revelation 1 repeated three times, and now in Revelation 11, who is, who was, and who is to come. Because you have taken our great power and reigned, the nations were angry. Your wrath has come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, 
the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Let me explain to you where is this chapter in 11. Here it says the seventh trumpet. The trumpets are like alarms, alerts. Maybe, maybe COVID was also an alarm, was alert. We felt at one time as if the end of the world will happen. The, if the wars that we have now became much worse, we can imagine there is end of the world. So these alerts are warnings. So we need to repent. It doesn't matter how to explain the virus and the battle uh, st stage at the end of the day. It all means that the Lord is at hand because God is near and He is coming. So the trumpets are warnings. The final one, the final one is always the ending. So when the seventh angel trumpets, he opens and then closes, then open and closes, then open. So it shows the events and then shows the end and then starts again to explain that the ending of the world is close which will have no sickness, no death, nothing like that. So we are now in the level of the trumpets. Revelation 8 started the trumpets and ended in Revelation 11. So the first trumpet was hail and fire. The first angel sounded, and, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown into the earth. And a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. The second trumpet, the burning mountain, like a great mountain burning with fire, was thrown into the sea. The third one is a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third on the rivers, on the springs of water. The fourth trumpet is one third of the nature is burnt. A third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, and a third of them, of, of all of them were darkened. So third of the creation is doomed. Then the fifth then before then the last three trumpets, one before them an angel flying saying, Woe, woe, woe of the inhabitants of the earth because the remaining three trumpets of the three angels. Even when it looks so gloomy and doomed like this, it's going to get better and the kingdoms of the world will be the kingdoms of God. It's going to be tough, but at the end, our Lord will be the king and he is not, he is going to be in ruling. Then the fifth trumpet, the key to the bottomless pit and locusts. And those locusts, key to the bottomless pit. And then the sixth trumpet is the war and death of one third of the people. If you imagine one-third, that means two billion people. Of course, we don't have to go through it literally, but it can occur before the final tribulation. 
a final result in Revelation 9. But the rest of mankind who was not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands. And that's what's upsetting to God. And in spite of all of these, including COVID, there are most people return back to their own past. I heard confessions f confessions of people had a co final confessions in their death bed and COVID prepared a lot of people. But lots of people became more stubborn after COVID and they became worse after. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands. Now there is evil worship. This is a very low way of reaching in a sinful light. They did not repent of their murders, of their sorceries, or their sexual immorality, or their thefts. Look at the abortion. Now we have a little light because Look at what happened during the abortion and the federal ruling. Now a lot of people are protesting. Someone said if this happens to animals or dogs, people would have not allowed it. But right before the seventh trumpet is Roman is Revelation 10. John is a small book. So our Lord told them that He will be the one opening it. And He, our Lord told them, you must prophesy against many people, nations, and tongues. And He said, before the coming of Christ, the gospel will be preached in the whole world. So this is a season of evangelism. This is a time to spread the word. Repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's what John the Baptist said and all the others have said it. And before the last trumpet, two minarets and lampstands appearing. More than likely, they are Enoch and Elijah. And in the midst of the devil's main work, a small light will appear, and God will show the hope. And then, as if there is a time of John the Baptist again carrying his head on a plate. The kingdoms of this world have become of our Lord. So until the second coming of Christ, we should always live with the hope that there is always hope. The devil will never win in his final round. Even if the whole world is against you and perverse, and even if everyone thinks against Christ, God has the ending and has the final round. When Elijah had the moment of weakness, he felt like he is being defeated. Our Lord told him, I have kept for myself 7,000 men who did not bow down a knee to Baal. So 
what happens on earth and what happens in heaven. As much as more darkness and sin increase in earth, we have much more in heaven. While sin is increasing on earth, in heaven there is a lot of hymns and argues. If you keep focusing on what happens on earth, you will be depressed. But if you keep your eyes on heaven, you will feel hopeful because all the kingdoms became for the world. In First John, we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. I, as our Lord said, the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. So, when the devil is loosened, he will start being free to defeat everyone, which we call it the final tribulation. In 1 Corinthians, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. The devil wants to distort Jesus' picture so people do not follow him because, because the image of Christ is actually imprinted on men. So when men's image are distorted, people do not follow the true image of Christ and they do not follow him or return back to him. The Lord reigns in Psalm 97. The Lord reigns, especially in the Igbeya prayer, the ninth hour. Because this is the ninth hour, the, 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 the hour of the cross. So our Lord reigns on the cross, reigns on a wooden tree. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice, let the multitudes of isles be glad. The multitudes of glads means the little good people who are surrounded by the world, like little islands. Clouds and darkness surround them, righteousness and justice are foundation of his throne. In Romans and in, in Revelation 11, then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices saying, The kingdoms of this world have come, have become the kingdoms of our Lord. And for his Christ, he shall reign forever and ever. Meaning that we always sing liturgical prayers because we are eager to see the great ending. Because we have been all waiting for him to reign and reign forever and ever. Because he is only our king, but we want him to be the king of everyone and everywhere. And that's what Daniel 7 said. I was watching in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. And that's why the song of, of all nations came from Daniel 7. 
because he saw people from coming from every place and every nation and every tongue and they are all giving glory if you hear thok that you go in all languages in indonesian and korean and burundi and chinese and mandarin and all types and it will be amazing so everybody is telling him in his glory glory be to you and thine is the power and glory and that's why evangelism is our responsibility in the famous psalm the messianic psalm of 110 the Lord has said sit at my right hand till I your enemies your footstool the Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion rule in the midst of your enemies in Revelation 15 who shall not fear you O Lord and glorify your name you are alone holy for all nations shall come and worship before you for your judgment have been manifested when the apostles sat with our Lord the disciples sat and asked him when will these things be the kingdoms have become the kingdoms of God when is that going to happen 2025 2030 are we going to be there or not are we going to be in heaven or on earth now as he sat on the Mount of Olives the disciples came to him privately tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age the disciples decided that there is a Maran Atha and that's why it was a, an intelligent question and that answers any questions regarding the false question about that he is going to reign on this age for a thousand years which we do not believe in as orthodox because there are people try to falsely imagine that he will come but stay on earth for a thousand years which is wrong in mark 13 tell us when will these things be take heed that no one deceives you some people claim that he will come several times some people are claiming he will take some people and leave some others so he clearly indicated take heed and he will come one time and he will come on the clouds to take everyone Luke 21 said the same things and the same he said many will come in my name saying I am he the time has drawn near therefore do not go after them so these are some of the events will come and occur at the end of the world but it has to happen before the big the ending Revelation 22 he who testifies to these things say surely I am coming quickly Amen even so come Lord Jesus People may have different attitudes but they are all agreeing in one thing that they are anti-Christ you need to be one of the tiny flock that follow Jesus surely I'm coming quickly This is a Maran Atha. I am, he is enforcing the rule that he is coming. And that's why John responded by saying, Please come, Lord Jesus. Come soon, Lord, because it's a very bad time. After God said, I'm coming, the church through John is saying, please come and please come soon.
الكنيسه مش مش جوانا الدنيا The church has a life that belongs to the angels and with the saints. We are not happy in this world. And that's why when a person is about to travel to Christ, he says, I have desire to return to Christ. Some people forget about the end and imagine it won't happen now. Second Peter The heavens and earth are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. There will be a time that there will be heavens and earth, the, the heavens and earth that you see. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Some people are all desiring what happens here. They want to build and carry, and, and they keep building things more and more. But all of that will be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you be in this holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved. Saint Peter is really a friend of John. John is saying, come soon, and Saint Peter is saying, He is coming soon and his day of coming is about to happen. We are not asking to die, but we are looking forward to go to heaven. We are waiting for a new heaven and new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth that passed away. God is waiting for others to occur, but it will never happen that that people are going to spend eternity on earth, which unfortunately a big fallacy that's happening to you. Then I saw a great white throne and, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. The heaven that you see now and you think it's beautiful, there will be even a far better heaven. The, because the old heaven and the old earth, or the first heaven and first earth had passed away. Isaiah 65 said the same thing. I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. I create new heavens and new earth, and the former shall not be remembered to All the old memories will pass away. You will have far better memories and spending much better time. Because I am building a new Jerusalem, a rejoicing, and her people a joy. But the end of all things at hand, all the kingdoms became the kingdoms of God. We have greeted so many people who have gone to heaven and so many priests that departed to heaven in the past two years, even bishops. And we didn't think that we were going to lose them. What is, what, is, what is waiting for us? The ending is at near. Should we be scared? No. This is not our final place of stay. This is not our permanent place of settlement. So, as St. Peter says, be serious and watchful in your prayers.
be watchful for your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. We have to keep your love very severe to everybody. This is the main condition to enter heaven, because love covers so many things. Believe glory to God, heaven, amen. اليونت بتكلف $12,000 If you are interested في واحدة من البنات اللي هي صغنانين اللي حبت بالفكرة أو اسمها ريبيكا أنا طلبت إن هي اللي تقوم بلم الحاجات دي فبعد البريك اللي يحب whether she can be is polite for orphans أو شقة كاش حضروه وهي ريبيكا أو حد من البنات هيعدي ويلم ويا رب نقدر نجيب ولو وان دايالس يونت في في الرحلة في الاجتماع ده uh, professional. You guys do not have to bring your phones. We will put it in the website. The Thank you. Thank Thank you. 